Hello and welcome everyone to our latest general review on Scope EK. This is sodium chloride or plasma light 148 evaluation in severe diabetic ketoacidosis, recently published in ICM. Current international guidelines recommend sodium chloride 0.9% that is normal saline as the replacement fluid of choice in diabetic ketoacidosis. Whilst normal saline is effective in restoring the circulating volume and improving the tissue perfusion, the use of it in large volumes is associated with hyperchloremic acidosis. So the objective of this particular study, which was a phase 2 trial, was to find out in critically ill patients with severe DKA whether balanced salt solution would result in a faster resolution of DKA compared to normal saline. And it effect on whether or not it increases the ketone generation. It was a cluster crossover open level randomized controlled trial comparing the use of plasma light and normal saline for patients with severe decay which was conducted in seven Australian ICUs over a period of 13 months which included two six months intervention periods and a one month wash out period. So this shows the first initial month of six months of normal saline followed by six months of balanced salt solution. This initial months were randomized and there was a one month period which was for washout to get over the practice which was already going on. The inclusions. All patients with age more than 16 years who presented to the emergency or the ICU at a participating site during the intervention period with severe DKA. Severe DKA was defined as a arterial pH less than 7.25 or a bicarb less than 15 and or a blood glucose of more than 14 millimoles per liter with a requirement of ICU admission in according to the judgment of the treating physician. Exclusion criteria, age less than 16 years who has previously been included in the same trial, contraindication to either of the fluids. A suspected diagnosis of hyperosmolar hyperglycemic non ketotic syndrome. The randomization. The participating sites were allocated using a random generated computer table into 1 is to 1 ratio to receive either plasma light or normal saline in the first intervention period. Now, all sites crossed over to the alternate allocation for the second intervention period. And uh, allocation of the first intervention period was concealed from the sites until the first week prior to the commencement of the study. Now procedures. All included patients received open level plasma light or normal saline depending on the fluid assignment to the site for the relevant intervention period as a part of their DKA therapy. The intervention continued for 48 hours from the ICU admission. The primary outcome. The primary outcome was change in the base excess to more than or equal to minus 3 milli equivalent per liter at 48 hours post ICU admission. The sensitivity analysis for the primary outcome were change in the base excess to more than or equal to minus 3 milli equivalent per liter at 24 hours of post ICU admission and fulfillment of the ADA criteria for DK resolution at 24 hours that is a uh, plasma glucose less than 11.1 millimole per liter and two of the following which were plasma bicarb more than 15 or a venous pH more than 7.3 or an gap less than or equal to 12 milliequivalents per liter. The safety parameters which were looked at were severe hypokalemia defined as potassium less than 3 millimoles, hypoglycemia, hypophosphatemia, hypocalcemia and persistent ketosis which was blood ketone concentration more than 1.5 millimoles per liter at 24 hours post ICU admission or any adverse effect deemed by the treating clinician to be related to the administration of the study fluid. So coming to the results total 12 ICUs were invited to participate out of this 5 were excluded because 3 declined and 2 for other reasons total 7 ICUs were randomized. 3 ICUs were allocated to normal saline in the study period 1 followed by plasma light in study period 2, 4 in the opposite uh, order. 54 in, were included in this group, 46 from the other group. Out of the 
after doing all the exclusion and all 42 patients were included in the normal saline group and 48 in the plasma light group so coming to the demographic profile the age was around 36 to 38 mostly female slightly higher 55 to 57 percent type 1 diabetes was the most common presentation around two-third of the cases newly diagnosed diabetes was slightly around 10 percent previous dk admissions were around two-third body mass index was around 22 the other parameters were roughly similar if you look at the ph ph was around seven in both the groups base excess of less than minus 24 was the highest which was around 50 percent of the patients glucose levels were very high around 31 in the groups fluoride levels was around 100 blood ketone was around 6 and anion gap was around 30. so if we look at the outcome the primary outcome that is base excess of more than or minus 3 mill equivalents per liter at 48 hours was 96 percent in the plasma light group while it was only 86 percent in the normal saline group however it was not statistically significant but base excess at 24 hours was statistically better in the plasma light group that is 69 percent versus 36 percent as well as the ada criteria for decay resolution was also better in the plasma light group although it was not statistically significant if you look at the change in the ph there was a definitely better ph resolution in the plasma light group seen here in the red line as well as the base excess recovery was better both of these were better however the anion gap and all was rest by cup was similar types if you look at the sodium levels blood glucose and the ketone levels they were roughly similar there was no greater ketone levels because of giving plasma light however the chloride levels were significantly higher in the normal saline group if you look at the uh, icu discharge then the icu discharge even though not statistically significant was better with plasma light now looking at the protocol adherence total fluid that was given was around 2.5 liters to 2.8 liters in the emergency around 4 liters in the icu so total the patient received around 6.7 to 6.5 liters of fluid in the 48 hours if you look at the compliance here you can see at the bottom the compliance in the plasma light group was very low which was around 66 percent if you look at the iqr it is 38 percent even in some centers however in the normal saline it was almost 100 percent adherence to the protocol if you look at the adverse effect they were roughly similar in the both group not much significant difference in terms of the fluid given ketosis which was suspected could have been more in the plasma light group was almost same so there was not much difference if you look at the renal replacement slightly higher in the normal saline group but obviously the population is too less now the limitations uh, if we look at the hardcore clinical criteria like mortality renal replacement therapy mechanical ventilation the study was too under part to comment on any of these it was mostly a phase two trial looking at the safety of giving this particular therapy so apart from that we should not take much from this study now adherence to the protocol again was very very limited especially with plasma light because the protocol and the practice is mostly to give normal saline there was almost one third non-compliance of giving plasma light which may affect the interpretation of these trials so if we can look at the final conclusion it was for patients with severe decay treatment with plasma light compared to normal saline may result in a faster resolution of metabolic acidosis and the use of plasma light was not associated with increase in ketone generation however for the the take home message is that since it is just a phase two trial we can't take much of clinical importance from this the only thing that we can take is that plasma light is a safe fluid which can be given in dk it does not contribute to the ketosis it has slightly better profile if we look in terms of metabolic acidosis correction but in more hardcore criteria for clinical point of view right mortality renal replacement therapy we need to do further studies then only with larger population then only we can make some meaningful conclusion to incorporate in, a, in our practice that's all for now check our website for further information thank you